pockets. Inside of the box, we have the phone itself in this bespoke white edition, and then nothing else. No, just kidding, Samsung did include accessories, it's just hidden in this top cover where we still get your documentation, a SIM tool, and a USB-C cable. But here is the phone itself, and right off the bat, at first glance, this looks almost identical to last year's flip. We've got the button layout with the rocker and the fingerprint scanner on the right side, SIM tray on the left side, the USB-C port at the bottom, and then on the top half, we have the same wide and ultra-wide camera layout, along with the same 1.9-inch cover screen. But what's different this year is everything just feels more refined. The metal frame now has a shiny finish to it, which makes it look more elegant than before. The new hinge is significantly smaller while also somehow feeling more sturdy, with it taking a bit more effort to open and close. And even the little things like the metal strips at the edge of the hinge have been reduced to the point where they're barely even noticeable. And then on the inside, while the crease where the phone folds is definitely still there, the actual dip on it isn't as pronounced as it was before. You can still feel it when you slide your finger across it, but it just isn't as noticeable as it was on the Flip 3. Now, the main screen on the inside is the screen you're going to use most of the time. It's a 6.7 inch AMOLED screen with a 120 hertz refresh rate, and it's pretty good. But it is worth noting that because this has a more narrow 22 by 9 aspect ratio, it's not the same 6.7 inch screen size on something like the iPhone 13 Pro Max, since that has a more typical aspect ratio. As for the 1.9 inch cover screen, well, it hasn't changed much. Samsung is trying to make it more useful by adding new widgets to it, and they're cool and all, but for the most part, I think the cover screen will mainly be used for notifications and checking the time. Although, one area where having the cover screen is pretty much a game changer is how you take selfies using the rear cameras, allowing you to frame yourself just right and take advantage of the significantly better image quality. You can switch between the wide and the ultra wide cameras with a simple swipe. And what's cool is you don't even have to unfold the phone to set this up. You just double press on the power button and boom, your selfie game has been taken to the next level. But look, the main reason anybody would want to go with a phone like this is the fact that it folds. And with that folding comes a number of advantages. The obvious one, of course, is that you get to have a big screen that folds in half, meaning you can fit it into your smaller pockets or you can just throw it into your bag without having to worry about the screen getting scratched up by your keys. And with flex mode, Samsung lets you do all sorts of cool things. You can set the phone down and take photos without the need of a tripod. You can control your music while it just sits on your desk or you can watch a video hands free. Now, I don't know if any of that is enough to justify the $1,000 price that Samsung is asking for this thing, since there are a lot of other phones on the market that cost around the same and technically have better specs. But what those other phones don't have that the Flip does is the cool factor. I mean, like the Flip is just different with this elegance and style to it, where I think using it is less about having the best phone spec for spec and more about making a fashion statement or just taking really good selfies. <laughs> This is the Galaxy Z Flip 4, Samsung's new flip phone that